Consider this following circuit. We have an ideal cell which has an EMF E and imagine that this capacitor is uncharged and there is no current flowing in the circuit because the circuit is not yet closed. The question now is what's going to happen the moment I close the switch? So let's try and analyze that. So here I'm going to now close the switch. There we have it. Now the circuit is complete and you can see that there will be some current flowing in this circuit. You can as of now completely ignore this part because this part is not a part of our complete circuit. We're going to need that later so forget about that for now. Okay so we're going to do, do analysis at two levels. First at an intuitive level where we're not going to do much of maths. Think of it as using our stomach and once we do that in the next video we're going to do rigorous maths and solve this properly. Okay. So imagine that I close the switch at a particular time and let's call that time as t equal to zero. My goal is going to be to calculate everything, to calculate the voltage across these two people, to calculate the charge on the capacitor and also to calculate the current through the resistor or the current through the circuit. I mean that's going to be the same thing. Alright, so as of now, let's try to understand what will be the values of these voltages, charge and the currents at t equal to zero well let's see we saw that before closing the switch the charge on the capacitor was zero and we have just closed the switch and there hasn't been any time that has passed and hence it's impossible for this capacitor to have gained any charge because if it has to gain any charge there there must be some finite time for the charge to flow and therefore as of now, the charge is zero. Let me write that down here. The charge on the capacitor is zero. And if the charge on the capacitor is zero, then the voltage across the capacitor must be zero. And that's quite intuitive because the voltage is the charge divided by capacity. So if the charge is zero, the voltage is zero. However, the, the circuit is closed and the battery is producing a voltage E. And since the, the capacitor is not taking any of that voltage, it clearly tells us that the entire voltage must be coming across the resistor. And since, and because of this, we can easily say now, the voltage across the resistor must be E. And because of this, I can also calculate what's the current across the resistor or through the resistor. Well, current is going to be just the voltage divided by R, Ohm's law, that's going to be E divided by R. Ta-da! I have now found every single thing that I wanted. So there we have it. That's the situation at time t equal to zero. But you know what? I want to know about these values at any moment in time. I want to know maybe after five milliseconds what's going to happen. But let's think about this. If I wait for some finite time, so let's say after a time delta t, what will happen to the charge on the capacitor? Well, since the current is flowing in this direction, charge will get deposited on this side of the capacitor plate. And so this plate is going to start becoming positive and this plate because of which is going to start becoming negative. And hence, the charge now is going to be more than zero. And because the charge is more than zero, we can now understand that the voltage across the capacitor should be more than zero. This helps us understand what's going to happen to the voltage across the resistor. Well, before entire E was coming across the resistor, but now it has to be shared with capacitor and the resistor. And since the voltage across capacitor is non-zero, this tells us now that the voltage across the resistor has to be less than E. And definitely because of this, the current in the circuit now has to be less than E by R. Ooh, this is telling us something. This is actually giving us a feeling of how these quantities are changing. These two guys are growing with time and these two guys are reducing with time. That's amazing. That's interesting. So this tells us that the current over here which we found was actually the maximum current. This was the maximum current. All right. You could ask me, well, this is just an eyeball. I mean, we don't know exactly. Could you tell me exactly how much the charge is? Well, I will tell you exactly how much the charge is in the next video when we analyze this in great detail. But as of now, we're just having some intuition, you know, having some fun with this circuit, teasing this circuit and trying to find out what's going to happen. All right, eventually I want to know what's going to happen after a long time, if I wait for a long time. 
We usually call that as wait for time t equals infinity. Now infinity is a little bit of far-fetched, but that's how we write things in physics. So I want you to think about it. Can you pause the video for a while and think about what's going to happen to these quantities? Just, just continue the same chain of thought. All right, I'm going to begin with the voltage across the capacitor because that's going to be the easiest this time. You see, the voltage across the capacitor is growing and the voltage across the resistor is decreasing. And this tells, but the total voltage cannot exceed E, charge con uh, energy conservation. And hence, this tells us that finally, the voltage across the capacitor must equal E. That should be the eventual condition because the voltage keeps on growing over here. And because of this, we can now find out what's going to happen to our charge. Our charge, you know the formula for capacitor, charge equals just C times V. So that's going to be C times V. V is just E. Ooh, this tells us this is going to be the maximum charge on the capacitor. What's going to happen to the voltage across the resistor? Well, that's going to decrease. Well, that's going to die out. That's going to become zero. Well, that has to happen. This entire voltage has been taken up by the capacitor now. But this tells us that the current across, or the current in the circuit is going to become zero. That's the eventual thing. And after this, things are not going to change anymore. Guess what? Things have achieved electrostatic equilibrium. And that's what a capacitor does. A capacitor is an electrostatic device, right? It wants to achieve electrostatic equilibrium. And that's what it eventually does. So we have now reached electrostatic equilibrium. Okay, so there have been two states that we have seen. There was a state from time t is equal to zero until we had time t is equal to infinity where the, where the variables were changing. This state where the variables were changing is what we call as the transient state. And then there's a state over here where we have reached equilibrium where things are not changing anymore. We generally call them as the steady state. A steady state doesn't really mean that things are zero. It just means things are not changing with respect to time. And therefore, the ultimate goal is going to be to figure out what are the functions of Q, V, VR, and I as a function. Uh, how are they going to change as a function of time? All right. So before we wrap up, I want to draw graphs for this. I mean, our intuition is so good. Even without any maths, we can draw graphs. And then we can check that in the next video whether the graphs that we drew is right or wrong. So I want to draw four graphs. Graphs for charge, voltage, across resistor, capacitor, and eventually the current. So let's draw them. So let's begin with charge. Well, we saw initially at time t is equal to zero, the charge on the capacitor was zero. So the, charge, the graph starts from here. We also know that if you wait for a long time, that is at t equal to infinity, that the graph should eventually end up over here. The graph should end up at q is equal to c times e. So that's going to be the eventual charge on the capacitor. So this will be q times Oops, this will be C times E. But the question is, but the question is, how will the graph go from here to here? Remember, it's supposed to take an infinite time to reach there. Well, we can, we can try. We can say, let's, let's draw a straight line. Maybe it grows with a straight line because we really don't know how the function changes. But guess what? You can't draw a straight line because if you try to draw a straight line from here to here, it will take a finite time. But we want to take infinite time. We want that to happen over a long time. And, uh, and we also, this also tells us one more thing. You see, even if you, if you say, that, okay, it doesn't really take infinite time because we don't know, we can still understand that it, it can't be a straight line because it's supposed to go here and stop. That means if it was a straight line, it's supposed to go over here and maybe go like this. And that's not possible because you, you, get, a sharp, you get a sharp point over here. And that's not allowed in, in real cases you can't get sharp points. So the only way that can happen is there should be some sort of a curve somewhat like this. Maybe the curve goes this way and then it approaches, it approaches, it approaches. It never quite reaches over there and that is the kind of expectation we can do when it comes to the graph of Q versus T. So what do you think is going to happen to voltage across time? Well, notice that the voltage follows the same rule, right? I mean, voltage is given by Q divided by C and C is a constant so voltage is going to do the same thing what the charge is doing and so we would expect the same thing for our voltage and the final voltage has to be 
E. What can we say about the voltage across the resistor? Well, if you remember what we did, notice that the voltage across resistor initially was E. Finally, it goes to zero. And again, there has to be a curve because it has to stay at zero and then we can't have sharp turns. And so this tells us that the graph should begin with E and eventually end at zero. So again, it's going to be a curve, but the curve is going to be downwards. There we have it. And what about the current? Well, the current initially was the voltage divided by R. So voltage E divided by R. And again, it should approach zero. And therefore, the current also is going to have the same graph. Ta-da! There we have it. So you see, even though we haven't done any mathematical analysis, just by using logic and a little bit of voltage and current and Ohm's law and everything, we were able to pretty much figure out what the graphs look like and what the situation looks like. In the next video, we're going to try and analyze exactly what's going to happen. Therefore, if you ask me at a particular time, so you told me, if you ask me, well, what happens after five milliseconds, then I should be able to tell you in the next video, we should be able to work out exactly how much will the voltage across the resistor reduce to, for example. So let's do that in the next episode. So to be continued, see you next time.